Snow White, Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo and Bambi firmly established the animated feature film as a staple of the Hollywood diet. In the decades after the war, Disney and the other Hollywood studios turned out a stream of animated feature films using the same basic techniques, pencil, paint, cell, camera. But in 1995, a film was released that heralded the biggest change in animated features since Snow White was released nearly 60 years before. Well, have you been replaced? Hey, what did I tell you earlier? No one is getting replaced. Now let's all be polite and give whatever it is up there a nice, big, Andy's room welcome. John Lasseter's Toy Story hit the US cinemas in Thanksgiving week in 1995. It was the first fully computer animated feature and it became the highest grossing film of the year, making nearly $400 million worldwide. Lasseter had made his first film for Pixar 10 years earlier. It was a one and a half minute short called Look So Junior. Here he gives inanimate objects personalities and tells a simple and beguiling story. How do you go about creating a personality out of an inanimate object? It actually was an interesting story because I had done The Adventures of Andre and Wally Bean. And I wanted to learn more about how to model things in the computer and stuff. And so I literally had a drawing table and I had uh, a, a Luxo lamp, an angle poise lamp, you know, an architect's lamp on my thing. And I just took it and I literally took a ruler and started measuring it and doing a draw, graph paper and, and, and drawing it out because it was right in front of me. And then I, I modeled it in the computer and added the articulation where it wanted. And I just started moving it around as though it was alive. And one of the things that I always do with inanimate objects is, is to make an object look like it's thinking. First thing you do is identify its face and its head. Being a light, I sort of thought, well, with the light coming out, that's kind of the vision, the head, and all it was a natural thing. And it just started looking around. It's been described by a lot of people as a steamboat willy of, of computer animation. And the reason is, is for the first time, um, a computer animated film was interesting to people and entertained people, not because of the mere fact it was made with a computer, but because of the story and the characters. And, it, and that was a massive leap for, for the, the art form. <laughs> You made Tin Toy. Was that a model of the sort of R&D for Toy Story? Is that where it all began? When we were making short films in the early days, we were developing our tools. We were developing our ability. Oh, I didn't realize at the time we were actually developing ideas, too. Um, Tin Toy was one of our short films. It was, um, you know, I love toys, as you can tell. And, and the, I, I watched a home movie that my sister took of my nephew. Just him sitting with his toys. And the way that he treated as a cute, cute, cute little baby, the way he treated his toys by slobbering on them and banging them on the ground, I thought, if I was a toy, that would be a horrible monster. And I thought, that's a great idea. <laughs> We won an Academy Award with it, the first computer animated uh, film ever to win an Academy Award. 
And when it came time to do our first feature film, I went back to the idea of toys being alive that we developed in Tin Toy because I, there's a lot more you could be said with that. And we started deriving ideas came from it. And out of it came the notion of, you know, just, I just even looked in my own family, how children have their favorite toy. And then every birthday or Christmas, all these new toys come and they like, forget that old toy. I want to play with a new one, new one, yay! And then next thing you know, that one's like the bottom of the toy box that gets given away to charity. It's just forgotten. And imagine what it must be like to be those old toys and to be panic-stricken on this day of joy for the child. Come on, guys. Every Christmas and birthday we go through this. But Toy Panty gets another dinosaur. A mean one. I just don't think I can take that kind of rejection. They're here! Birthday gets the big one! Oh, boy. Can you take a look at all those presents? I can't see a thing. The paradox of Toy Story to me is just how human it is. It's, it seemed to me, looking at, for instance, at the expressive range of the characters, Woody's face, for instance, just what, how much emotional range there was in that, more really than most traditional animation. There was one thing that happened that really took it to another level. One of our animators um, was animating a scene, and he... Uh, he needed Woody to kind of be thinking and figure something out. All of a sudden, all he did was shift Woody's eyes side to side. Oh no. Just this minor little shift side to side. I can't show my face in that room without buzz. I sat back and looked up on there and it was like, oh my God, he's alive. It's a spaceship, Buzz! Come on, man, hurry up! I'm like the now you're sure this space freighter will return to its port of The other thing you get is this incredible attention to detail. I mean, you even put in this realistic dirt and grind. These films are lovingly handcrafted, frame by frame by frame. Everything in a Pixar film is there to help tell the story. One of the things you have to remember about animation in general, but especially computer animation, you get nothing for free. You look at a Pixar film and the incredible detail that's there, every little piece of detail, whether it's in Nemo, the, the stuff floating in the water, the beams of light coming in, had to be thought of, had to be designed, had to be modeled, had to be, you know, the software created in order to do it, had to be placed, had to be directed. You know, that's why our films take four years to make. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait to cross. <laughs> hold my fin, hold So my here fin. you've got all this fantastic detail with everything looking alive and believable, but it's still all there to serve the classic storyline, characters taking an emotional journey. I'll pick you up after school. That's one of the things I love the most about animation is 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 the story in the characters that's what we in at pixar that's the number one thing that we do but when you even look back to the earliest successful animation it's successful not because of the quality of the draftsmanship or the look of things it's successful because of the personality of the characters people were looking beyond the actual drawing itself and just loving this falling in love with this character and wanting to see him again and again and again this isn't flying, this is falling with style. 